fungal skin infections. So actually most fungal infections are infections of the skin. Uh, the, the fungi don't usually like to live inside of you very well, uh, but they're quite fine living on top of you. Um, there are a number of different species that cause fungal skin infections, but I'm going to focus on uh, the most common manifestations, which is usually referred to as tinea. Now, tinea means worm. These are not worm infections. But way back in like the pre-medical time period, they thought that these rashes were caused by worms, and so the name stuck. Uh, but they are in fact caused by fungi. Uh, and the technical term for a disease caused by a fungi is a mycosis. Uh, tinea is usually followed by the description of where the infection occurs. Uh, it can invade, um, so dermatophytes, which are the fungi that cause it, they can invade hair, nails, or the keratin in the skin. Uh, and uh, if the infection occurs just like on the skin, it's usually called ringworm. Uh, if it occurs on the foot, it's athlete's foot. If it occurs on uh, in the crotch, it's jock itch. And there are many names describing the location. So tinea capitis is infection of the scalp, usually resulting in uh, dandruff. Tinea barbei is the uh, uh, fungal infection of the beard. Tinea axillaris, corporis, cruris, pedis, and on and on. Uh, in all cases, it usually causes similar to the same symptoms. Um, the symptoms include itching, bad odor, rash, uh, peeling skin. Uh, often scaly, raised areas surrounded by redness. Um, irregular rings or lacy patterns. Um, patchy areas of hair loss can occur on the scalp. If you get infection of the nails, then the nails will often thicken, turn yellow, and often split or fall off. Uh, the causative agents. There's a number of different dermatophyte fungi, yeast usually, or skin invading molds, sorry, uh, that can cause it. Um, you don't need to know these genera, so. Uh, but just, it's caused by various skin invading molds. Uh, the pathogenesis, you get it on your skin, it starts growing, usually likes to grow in um, dark, moistish environments. Molds like to grow in moist environments. Uh, yeasts can grow in drier environments. Uh, but usually it's going to be in dark, moist environments. So feet, groin, very common. Uh, there are some species and strains that are more virulent than others. Uh, and uh, there are even some of them that can actually feed off of your skin. They produce an enzyme called keratinase that digests the keratin in your skin and can, well, like, eat your skin. Um, it's pretty rare, but it does happen. Uh, it diffuses into the dermis, provoking an immune response, hence the typical rash. Um, it can spread from person to person, usually by direct contact or by fomites, um, sharing footwear, things like that. Uh, the patient age, moisture of the area, and the virulence of the organism are the most important determinants in how severe a case you get. Treatment and prevention. Uh, there are prescription antifungals uh, particularly antifungal creams that work quite well. Uh, there are also over-the-counter 
antifungals that work okay. Uh, and often there are just like powders that will dry out the area. And usually if you dry out the area, it'll go away on its own. Uh, prevention, um, well, keeping the areas clean, keeping the areas dry, changing socks, uh, like not wearing them over and over again, open shoes, rubbing alcohol, maybe. Although rubbing alcohol dries out your skin um, and, uh, and can cause other issues. Uh, other diseases, so Candidia albicans is a normal skin microbiota, but it can invade the deeper layers of the tissue, um, particularly in young children. Uh, it can also invade uh, the, uh, the vagina, causing yeast infections uh, or candidiasis. All right, and as you can probably hear, uh, I need to go feed my cat before she starts devouring me. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say about fungal.